Konnichiwa everybody, welcome back We're back on another pickups video Seems to have been a while Um, Bit of a mixed bag Some decent stuff I'd say So I think We'll, we'll start with the Atari And then if you don't like the Atari You can skip this bit Um, There's no order So I mean the Atari collecting Has dropped off a cliff um, it's just really hard to find now the, the last few I'm after they all tend to be in America so I'm just playing the long waiting game I'm not paying over the odds for anything um, you know if they turn up as and when great if they don't I'm not going to worry um, I'm, I'm so way behind my pickups but some of these are from months ago, some are more recent, I've just kind of mixed them all up, so there's a bit of a, uh, there's a bit of a variety. Anyway, first one we got is Tennis, another Activision game, usually a badge of quality on the 2600. Um, and it's very basic, Tennis, but if you can, you know, I never had one back in the day, but I can imagine, you know, Pong was Tennis, and essentially. To then go to this, this would must have felt like playing the real game. I mean, by today's standards, incredibly basic, but not a bad game of tennis at all, if I'm honest. You know, for the times we're talking about, really quite good. Oh, I should have said, welcome, if you, to the Hardcore 44, anyone who's watching. Um, big up Jace. Right, what should we do next? Um, there's no order, like I say. The next one we got is Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back. Um, I would have liked this one boxed, really. But I am very short on space now for 2600 boxed games. And this cropped up in nice condition. And the box one's not mega cheap. It's not dear, but it's not mega cheap. So I thought, I'll grab a cart on there, it's fine. I'm not going for a full set of Parker games or anything, so this will do me. Um, not a bad little game. Um, more or less a Defender clone, um, where you're taking down the uh, Atats. But not bad at all. Again, for the time, would have been brilliant, I would imagine. Um, but I'd not aged too badly, that one. Next up, we'll, yeah, we'll go for this one. Not the greatest car to this one. Um, it's got a bit of damage, but it can go for decent money, this. So I was more than happy with it. Mario Brothers. Obviously, a Nintendo classic. One of the few uh, Nintendo games you can get on the Atari. Um, but really not a bad conversion, this. Um, it's obviously the original single screen. Uh, Mario Brothers arcade game um, but it's really well done it's a shame about the damage like say, it's a bit of label damage and the, the holes are punctured unfortunately but aside from that it's really good um, so I'm more than happy with it um, like I say this can go for decent money um, but not bad at all then in a similar vein you get in lovely condition this one I picked up Donkey Kong CBS cart, obviously. Um, now, there's obviously a lot of furore about this because I think CBS made the game and the ColecoVision version is sort of, especially for the time, was fantastic. And people were under the impression that purposely made the 2600 version bad to make the ColecoVision version look so much better and hence sell ColecoVision consoles. And yes, the ColecoVision version is way better, but I don't think this is too bad, to be honest. Yes, there's some screens missing, and obviously it doesn't look as good as the ColecoVision or the arcade game, but it's still Donkey Kong, and you can still play a decent game of Donkey Kong. I think there's only two screens on this one, rather than, you know, what was on the other versions, but although it's kind of derided on the 2600, Personally, I don't think it's too bad. 
So that's Donkey Kong. Then next up, I think, I think all them were off eBay actually. It's been so long now, some of them I can't remember, but because I've bought some of this 2600 stuff from like local shops, but I think, I think all them are off eBay. Um, and again, I think this was as well. Uh, we've got Commando Raid. Now this is a uh, US Games. Nice condition cart. And you can see the graphics there. But I will have put some footage up of these. Um, it's kind of a... Um, I suppose it's a little bit like Missile Command in a way. But you're sort of... You've got your central sort of... Uh, ship or base whatever it is firing at the enemies above trying to protect the kind of four towers really um, quite simplistic but not a bad little little game to be honest um, really quite decent I, you know if, if that kind of if you like that kind of thing and there's a fair bit of that kind of stuff on the Atari personally I think that's all right remember prices I've got a feeling that's like a 10 15 pound game if, if memory serves but I honestly can't remember um, this next one now this is quite rare as I remember it's not like rare rare it's just uncommon perhaps it's a better word and we've got Polaris which is a Tiger Vision cart now I do like these Tiger Vision carts and if you can see that sort of slope down there so you can pull them out um, and they've, they've got a nice end label on and they're usually nice funky colours this this is a cream it might have been white originally I don't know um, it's it's kind of a similar game to that commando raid in a way um, and this is obviously submarine based Polaris um, and you're the submarine firing at enemies like above the bo above water level um, it's got Taito on the label, so I'm assuming it's probably a Taito coin up. Um, it's a bit simplistic, this one. It's all right, but I think it is quite basic. I'm not saying it's bad. It's you know it's all right, especially for the time it would have been fine. But I, I, I don't think it's necessarily aged brilliantly. It's, it's perhaps a bit. I'll possibly say it's a bit boring, maybe. Not much going on. It, it's all right, but it's nice to have. Like I say, it is uncommon, and I'm sure I got this cheap. Again, I think it was eBay. Um, I'm sure this is the one that I've seen sell for like thirty, forty quid, cart only, or listed for thirty, four. I can't remember. It's it's not a cheap game anyway, generally speaking. But I'm sure I got this. In fact. I think I might have got this in a bundle and that's how I came by it off yes I think I bought a bundle of like three or four games and this was one of them um, which is how I got it sort of at a reasonable price um, so I, I, I am chuffed to have that then the last Atari game I've um, got 7800 this time um, and this is a 7800 version of a game I'd already got on the 2600 and we've got crossbow uh, again unfortunately there's a bit of label damage in the holes where it's been punctured at the top um, and it's much the same game obviously it's, it's got better graphics and there are more screens I think um, but I do quite like this game crossbow um, it's essentially a kind of light gun game without a light gun where you've got a you've got a protect the character walking across the screen by killing the enemies and stopping them sort of attacking and killing the sort of innocent character walking across the screen and you've just got to sort of shoot them just with a crosshair on the screen it's simple but I do really quite like this game and obviously this version is better than the 2600 version so again really pleased to add that um, there aren't many 7800 games I'm, I want really um, and I'm I'm not bothered about boxed you know like most of this Atari stuff so 
if I see them caught down there and it's one I want, I'm happy to grab it as long as it works, that's all that matters. Right, Famicom. Always a good day when you can add a Famicom game. Um, I've got three today. Um, this first one, lovely purple cartridge. And this is um, Haugen's Alley, which is a light gun game. Um, it's kind of um, sort of a, a marksman shooting type game where you're sort of shooting at targets, but the screen sort of scrolls. And you can you get like the traditional um, targets that sort of flip spin around when you hit them. Um, simplistic light gun fun, but it's, you know, much like that. Uh, one on the master system really uh, marksman shooting, trap shooting, safari that, that one it's in that kind of style um, so I'm chuffed to get the uh, Famicom version I have, um, I've been upgrading all my uh, my say upgrading side grading from NES carts to Famicom carts and I think this was the last light gun one I needed um, so I'm chuffed to get that then oh, we've got a bit of a classic now. I think the, the, it's a cream cartridge. I think this should have been white originally, um, and it's Adventure Island, which is obviously Wonder Boy, kind of with a different name um, and a slightly different looking character that you control. Um, but it's essentially it's, it's Wonder Boy on the Famicom. Um, now it's not as good as the master system version because that's spectacular um i'd put that in my probably top three master system games of all um but nevertheless it's still decent on the famicom and i'm chuffed to have it uh there is a sequel to this which i uh i've got on my list but it's nice to have then the last famicom game today we've got a stone cold classic and this is kind of a recent, I wouldn't say obsession, but sort of um, an avenue I've gone down since I built the arcade. I've got into the sort of older arcade games that I never really spent too much time with back in the day. And I'm loving Pac-Man, so I've got to get the Famicom version. Um, I do like these Namco cartridges, a black one particularly like because they've got labels on the top of the Namco games um, and it, honestly this, this is really quite a good version of Pac-Man um, really nice to play uh, so I'm chuffed to have that that's Pac-Man on the Famicom right not many left now we've got a DS game I couldn't tell you the last time I bought a DS game um, I don't, I've sold most of my handheld stuff, I haven't got any left except the 3DS and a handful of DS games. Um, this is one I've looked at over the years, seen it for sale and I've just never pulled the trigger on it. And then I saw this one and it came after, or shortly after I'd sold um, all my game and watch titles. I, I mean I haven't got many but you know I just... I'd only got like three, but they were ones I'd had back in the day. Um, but I needed the money and sold them. You know, I didn't use them, so I thought, these can go. But then, I managed to grab this, which is the Game & Watch collection on the DS. Um, this is a Japanese one. And there is another one of these, with different games on. Um, there's only three games on it. You've got Oil Panic, Greenhouse... But the, the one I bought it for was Donkey Kong because that's the original sort of orange um, game and watch Donkey Kong is the one I've got the nostalgia for most really because that's the one I had back in the day and played most. Um, and I, like I said, I sold mine and I've managed to buy this. Obviously, it's vastly cheaper. Works fantastic on the DS, obviously dual screen so it's amazing to be able to play that game and watch Donkey Kong 
in more or less the same style as the original Game & Watch. Um, and my brother had Oil Panic, so, you know, I enjoyed playing that as well. So, again, that's great to have. I never played Greenhouse. Um, it's a shame there's only three games, really. You know, you'd think they could have put them all on one DS cart, wouldn't they, really? All the all the Game & Watches that were relevant and playable on a DS. You, one, one cart could have done them all. Uh, like I say, there is a second one of these, but I think it's a Japan exclusive or it's like a Nintendo Club exclusive or something. Um, and I think there's only—I could be wrong, but I think there's only two. There's only two games on that one, I think, and the games that are on it, I'm not bothered about. So I was only concerned with getting this one. So I'm chuffed to have it, and it is a particularly nice gold case. And I do like the Japanese and American DS cases because they're slightly thinner, really nice. But I love Donkey Kong, so it's it's amazing to be able to play that. Right, next up, we've got an Xbox 360 title. Yes, I know. I don't buy these either. Um, however, I am trying to get all the games on my list of 360 shooters I would like since I got that whatever it was two years ago and I'm almost there I'm, I'm, I need one more now I've got this and we've got Castle of Shikigami 3 um, vertical shooter obviously there's two previous games so I was keen to get this one on the 360 I know you can get these on modern platforms but I prefer the originals myself nice and complete um, I don't think I've actually tried this yet. Um, but I didn't think... The other two, like the previous two, I think they're re reasonably good. I wouldn't say they were brilliant, but I don't mind them. I think they're decent games. So hopefully this one is in a similar vein. Um, so I'm, I'm chuffed to get it, like I say. it's It's been a quite a, a lengthy journey getting these. And there's a lot of them expensive these days. Um... I'm not going for a full set of them because there's some I just don't think I'd, I'd enjoy. So I'm just I've just tried to buy the ones I knew I'd like or thought I'd like. Um, and like I say, I've got one more to get, which is uh, Mamaru can curse, which is the, the one like Pocky and Rocky, I think. Um, so I'm sure to get that. Right, so we've got four games left: PS One and PS Two. So, sticking with shooters, I had got this already on the Saturn, but since I bought, I built the um, the sort of tabletop arcade cab in the garage, which I'd got a PlayStation fitted to. I was keen to try and get the uh, PS One shooters. Well, and PS2 for that matter to use uh, what were Tarte compatible for the tabletop arcade cap so I went down the, the route of making a list of uh, Tarte shooters on PS1 and PS2 trying to pick up the ones I hadn't got so anyway picked up Strikers 1945 um, great game I know it's on, I've got it on the Saturn like I say and it's on the Psycho shooters collection which again I've got, so I, you know, I didn't need it, but it's a great game. Um, and it's, although the PS1 ain't kind of noted for shooters, like the Saturn is, to be honest, I think the PS1 is just as good for them, to, really, to be honest. So I'm chuffed to get Strikes 1945, what a fantastic game. So obviously, I've got 1945, so I had to get part two. Unfortunately, only like the budget pre release, but you, don't have to know. you can still play it. It's the same game, it's just a bit of a naff cover. You can't tell when it's on chill. Um, again, a fantastic game. They are awesome, and it is in nice condition with Spine Girl. Um, so, yeah, chuffed to tick those two off the uh, PS1. A Tarte shooter list. Then the last PS1 game, I mentioned this in the 
um, PS1 racers video a few weeks ago and I got Rally to Europe um, so I'd already picked up Rally to Africa and I thought I've got to get this one as well um, really really good these are um, like I said in that previous video it's, it's, it's very much a homage to Sega Rally it's not as good as Sega Rally um, got the spy card you know, it's a cruder, a cruder sort of third party attempt at Sega Rally, but it's done quite well. Um, and it's really worth playing. It's a shame it never got released outside of Japan. And again, it's a shame it's not very cheap these days, unfortunately. Um, I forget which way around it is now, but one of, I think, Rally to Africa is unlockable in this if you like complete this, which you know, it's tough. I believe Rally to Africa unlocks in this, or vice versa. It's one of, I forget which way around it is, but I think, I think this is the later game, so I think Rally to Africa unlocks in this, if you're that good. But anyway, Rally to Europe. And I particularly like the box, actually. Love that Subaru artwork on there. Right, then the last game we've got is a PS2 game. Um, and unfortunately I haven't had much time to play this I've only played it briefly and it does seem really really good to be fair um, I'm pretty much there with my PS2 games collection really I, some I haven't showed yet but there's nothing sort of majorly outstanding that I want now it's just picking up bits here and there that I think oh I quite fancy that but I've got kind of all the games on the list of games I think I thought to myself yes I've got to get that you know I'm, I'm kind of there with that anyway we've got Wang and Midnight which is a Japanese street racer game basically I think it's in the sort of Tokyo Highway Battle universe because I'm sure I'm sure Genki made that um, but it's that kind of thing you know there's a bit of story involved like you'll race an opponent and that kind of thing um, plays and looks really quite nice um, only in Japan as I understand um, really good um, does seem to be going up in price a bit this one um, but I'm chuffed to have it I'd, I'd like to play it a bit more really um, if you like kind of Tokyo Highway Battle games I'm, I'm sure you'd love that really that's Wang and Midnight. And that'll do it for today, I think. Um, let me know what you think in the comments. Always good to hear what people have got to say. That's why I make these videos. I'm not doing it for my for my health. Um, it's just all about the interaction for me, like other people have said recently. It, the comments is what makes it worthwhile. If you don't get the comments, it's not worth making them, to be honest. Because um, it's the it's those and you know making great mates and you know friends on youtube that makes doing the videos all important and what it's all about for me so let me know what you think in the comments thanks for watching and see you next time hopefully so nice